You're watching 90s Rock in 9 Minutes. I'm Sam Bass. This is Slim Pickens. And today, we're going over Stone Temple Pilots number four. Yeah. A little bit after, you know, my big Stone Temple Pilots phase. Uh, you probably, you were probably into this one, right? Oh, big time. Core. And, and purple even more than that. Uh, so I kind of had to go back down uh, the Stone Temple Pilots rabbit hole to refamiliarize myself uh, yeah, with number that. four. I, I didn't, I never listened to it all the way through. I, until I, I don't think I had either. Recently. Yeah. It was something about, I was watching this live performance and something just clicked and I was like, I'm going to give that a chance. And so why did you pick this album to, to review today? I was curious about that because, and this is one of the things that I was talking to you about earlier that I really like about doing your podcast, the albums that you pick are kind of deep cuts, so to speak, in terms of a band's entire catalog. This isn't the one that most people are going to be familiar with. Uh, the bottom line is I grabbed it in a record store just because I, I liked that first track, you know? Yeah. I was like, screw it, I'm, I'm going to have an old school moment and just check out a CD. And it didn't stop rocking. Like yeah. The, I mean, literally all the way through number five, Sour Girl. That was the big hit. Do you remember that? I do. I do. Yeah, I was a freshman in college when that song did came you, out on the radio. Did you see the music video? With yeah, it had Sarah Michelle Gellar in it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or she was the girl in Buffy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So And some Teletubbies. Buffy and Teletubbies. Yeah. And then I was like, well, there's no way it's going to... Is there's no way it's going to keep going and then it did with no way out right after that i really didn't care anymore because i had rocked so hard yeah you know what i mean well this song you know they did 11 songs on this album and it really felt like they were threading the needle between trying to compete with some of the you know contemporary uh you know rock metal at the time because we're getting into a little post grunge you know like grunge had you know was starting to evolve into something else i feel like really and so they corn, were biscuit. yeah but yeah. then they had songs like down and uh heaven and hot rods that sounded to me more like old school stp more like you know that original core album they stepped up they were like all right you know what i mean and they delivered agreed Agreed. So. Well, you know, I think they were also kind of, you know, they, there was a lot of uh, stuff going on within the band at the time. Oh, yeah, Scott, he was in jail, right? <laughs> they did not They did very little touring and promotion of this album because he went to jail on a one-year sentence right before this album came out. He ended up only serving like five months, but you know, it was for drug possession. So it was, you know, it wasn't like that they, you know, got to you know, really you hit the road. Now, they were scheduled to tour, I think, like with Metallica type bands, you know, some real, you know, kind of heavyweights in the metal scene, uh, but didn't get to do that because of Waylon's drug sentence. So I thought that was an interesting little uh, tidbit and maybe why this album never became as popular as some of their previous ones. Hey, you heard it best. Don't use drugs, kids. <laughs> That's Instead, right. spend your money on a t-shirt. That's right. We got Sam Bass Original Designs at my Etsy store, check it out. Nineties Kids Are Us is the Etsy store where you can get all original Sam Bass designs. Get posters and t-shirts that are one of a kind from a nineties kid to you. So did you know that there was a little bit of controversy uh, regarding the cover of this album? I do, and I didn't know that at all until I checked, you know, did some research. You must have read the same Wikipedia article I did. About Power Lloyd. Power Lloyd, yes, sir. The story goes, uh, Power Lloyd uh, had come out with an album, and they had submitted it to be used, or at least submitted one of the songs to be used on MTV's Celebrity Deathmatch. That was an awesome show. That was an awesome show. But uh, somebody at MTV got an advanced copy of this album and saw that the covers were almost identical. Yeah, we can flash that on the screen. They are exactly alike. They are exactly alike. Black background, white star with the name on the name of the band on the front. So do you think they obviously ripped that off? Not intentionally. I mean You think, think it coincidentally two bands made the exact same cover. One hundred percent. Yeah, I think that's a total coincidence. That would be like if our logo looked like exactly the same as like the McDonald's logo or something. <laughs> we gotta be able a Photoshop wizard. 
but the the, the star is such an often used shape in you know everything everywhere so as long as the, as well as you know black and white covers you know so yeah i think it was a total coincidence i don't know what do you think you don't think so here's what i don't get if you're gonna rip off an album cover why would you rip off that that's my point that's why i don't think they did I think they were just like, yeah, all that ideas. Let's just put a store on the front, throw our name on there, and we'll be good to go. You know, I'm gonna rip off a Nirvana album cover. Just have a baby in water, but like the diaper's full. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I don't know how that resolved though. The 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 last thing I read about it was that uh, STP made some kind of offer to uh, Power Lloyd. That their lawyer deemed unacceptable. And Paraloid, who have, have you heard of Paraloid? I've never heard of Paraloid. I didn't even bother to look up Paraloid and listen to the music because their band name was so stupid. <laughs> Maybe I will on the way home. Yeah, you're gonna be jamming out to some Paraloid. So Sam, do you know what STP's original band name was? I actually don't. You know what? You know more about this than I do. Man. Well, let me educate you, Sam Bass. STP's original band name was Mighty Joe Young, but when they signed with Atlantic, Atlantic was like, you know what, that's got to go. And they ended up landing on Stone Temple Pilots because they were a big fan of the STP motor oil logos from back in the day. Do you remember those? Yeah, I do remember that. So what's your favorite song from this album? Uh, I definitely like the first song. Down? Man, this is weird being on this side of it. <laughs> it's a little weird being on this side, too. I've been demoted. <laughs> Down was definitely like kind of a return to form, I feel like. That was what like I thought STP was supposed to sound like. But uh, I won't say Sour Girl was my favorite, but to me, Sour Girl was their interstate love song for this album. But I think my favorite song was Atlanta, which is... A very kind of low key melancholy sort of song yeah, towards, I like that towards the back of the album but it feels like you're more of the uh, you like more of their uh, where they kind of lean into that metal and hardcore grunge side yeah I like when they just hammer hey nothing wrong with that I like the laid back <laughs> he's laid back I'm hammered you know <laughs> I want my chair back Ooh, something got mixed up in the matrix It's just been weird, man. It's been fun, though. Yeah, th that's the best kind of fun, the weird fun. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> you know. I have to get my equilibrium back. <laughs> you did have to duck down under that microphone. Throw off your inner ear a little bit, feel a little dizzy. I am, and I'm constipated. <laughs> <laughs> he did say he was lactose intolerant earlier. So we've gone over an awesome band. You're an awesome musician. Tell the people more. Okay, so uh, I'm Slim Pickens. I've been playing guitar with Itchy Richie and the Burning Sensations for a few years, uh, but I now have my uh, first uh, solo single coming out. It's going to be a three-song single titled Wisteria. Uh, and by the time this podcast drops, it'll be on all major streaming platforms, so be sure and check that out. That's going to be under, again, Slim Pickens, and the name of the single is Wisteria. Nice. This has been another episode of 90s Rock in 9 Minutes. I'm saying, Bass, this is Slim Pickens. Be sure to like and subscribe. <laughs>